So one of the challenges that we face when we start to acquire more plants, and believe me, there are many, but one of those challenges is like, uh-oh, where am I going to put this plant? And pretty soon you're going to bring one home and if you live with another person, he or she is going to be saying, oh my God, I can't believe you came home with another plant. Where the heck are you going to put that? So today I'm going to teach you how to actually find more space for your plants even when you don't think you have it. So horizontal spaces are usually the first spaces that fill up. And pretty soon after that, you're going to start looking at your walls. And one of the easiest things I feel like I executed within my house is just trellises. And this trellis actually happened to be tossed out on the side of the street. I picked it up, painted it, and now you can see that it's growing this epiprenum orium on it pretty happily. In fact, this epiprenum I have to stay on top of because it has mealybugs, so I'm constantly washing it as well, which is good because then the leaves aren't so dusty. But if you walk over here, I have another trellis, and you can see that this philodendron, I have two philodendrons actually growing here. I have a melanochrysum here, and also this um, Arabussens philodendron as well and it has just grown like crazy. And of course, that is with the help of the Soltec Solution Light because I'm growing this pretty much in the interior of my space. And the only way to be able to grow it so bushy and so well is by having an additional light on this. So one of my favorite things is this thing that I found called Hang a Pot. So what these are designed to hang is actually uh, terracotta pots with a lip on it. And I think this is the biggest size that they could hold. But as you can see, when I fit the terracotta pot in, this is how it works. You just slide it up like this, and make sure that the base of the lip is resting right on here. And ta-da! <laughs> I thought I was gonna drop, but it's not. So it actually just looks like that it's floating. And I have this on where my, uh, the, these pillars, that I have and I was just like, God, it'd be really great to actually grow some plants. You'll notice that I have Aglionema here and the Syndapsis pictus that I have growing and that is just expanding up onto my ceiling space as you could see. And like I said, this doesn't hold anything bigger than this. So you're, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have the right kind of pot for this. So I've already highlighted the vertical swing garden on my channel, and this is a little bit more advanced, although you don't need that much stuff in order to be able to create this. But this is another alternative and another way in order to be able to show plants well within a vertical as well as a horizontal space but perhaps one that didn't exist before. If you wanna even get more advanced, then you can think about creating a true vertical garden on your wall. And this one, I have a DIY on my channel already, so you could tune into that if you wanna know how, roughly how to build this. But this is just actually using gutters, and you'll see that we amended it a little bit with these um, iron holders right here, which is another way in order to be able to create space on the vertical space that you're using. And if you look all the way up here, started to assemble some trellises as well in order for the plants to be able to grip and grow on as well. So there's a lot of different options with the vertical garden. And this one of course is custom to my space. However, since the time that this has been created, there are lots of out of the box vertical garden options that you could choose from that you could consider putting on your wall in order to be able to grow your plants vertically. Now I've already highlighted this as a DIY already, but I have to highlight the mason jar plant garden that I built with my dad because this is another great opportunity in order to be able to showcase plants in your house, but also to keep them off of horizontal space because you're growing them vertically on your wall. I wanted to take this down and show you because this is another clever way that I figured out on how to display plants is just a wall basket. So it has this kind of flat back, as you can see here, that fits nice and snug against your wall. And I have a few of these in my house, but I only have one plant actually growing in one of my wall baskets, and this is that Hoya right here. Actually, I could see it needs a little bit of watering as well, which I might do right here. And uh, yeah, so that is just the, the, the simplicity and the ease of a wall basket, which again, keeps it off of a horizontal space and helps you display it in a really beautiful way on your wall.
The other option that we have is actually mounting plants, and I've been getting into this relatively recently, but as I was running out of horizontal space, I started to look at plants that are really good mounted. So here is my platycerium right here that is just growing very well. And one thing to note about uh, mounted plants is that you have the sphagnum here that may retain, retain some moisture, but it also dries out relatively quickly too. So you're going to have to see and monitor this so because it's not like holding water in soil, but these are just a few different ways on how to uh, display plants. And you can see this one right here, my Dyskidia, is mounted also on sphagnum here. And I have a number of others as well, including an ant plant and also this Aeschcananthus. And the way that I actually just water these plants is just like this. I make sure the water is um, at least a little bit warm so it doesn't freeze any of the roots. And then I'll let, let it just sit in the sink in order to be able to, to dry off. So hanging plants are a really nice feature in your house and there are different ways that you can hang your plants and one of the easiest ways to do it is actually on a curtain rod. So you can see that I'm not even using this curtain rod for curtains. I'm actually using it to hang up my cynanchums as you can see here. So the other option that you have is to get a railing and to hang this from the ceiling in order to be able to create more hanging space for plants. Now, this is a little bit more involved because you want to make sure whatever you are putting into your ceiling is going to hold the amount of weight that you have below it. So a couple items just to keep in mind is that you're going to want to put these hooks into studs in your ceiling, which are usually these metal rods that are going to be holding the foundation of your space together. So you're going to want to drill directly into those because if you're drilling into drywall, then all of this would actually fall down. So make sure that you have the right kind of railing and be able to hang your plants off of this with the right kind of S hooks as well. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend getting rid of all of your wardrobe, but that is partially what I did for this area because there is so much light coming in and this is a closet area, but I decided to actually turn it into a growing space. So you could use these clothing rods in order to be able to, same principle, hang plants off of them and actually twine plants off of them as well. And as you can see, I get a flood of light here from my southwest facing windows. And especially even during the winter months, the light goes in um, a little bit deeper into the room. So a lot of these plants, in addition to having some grow lights, will get a lot of grow light and sometimes could be a little bit too much for the plants too. So you have to be mindful of that because it could actually then um, become chlorotic if there's too much light coming into the house. One of the other things that we think about is actually creating more shelf space. And I am a huge proponent of that and especially in unlikely places. So to give you a great example is just these little custom shelves that was designed to actually fit around these gas pipes and right behind the stove in order to be able to fit more plants. And you'll actually see that I have a little LED lamp strip underneath here or a little light strip underneath here that you could just touch to turn off and to turn on. So it's like super simple. Additionally, I have another shelf space right up here, which doesn't get any of that kind of LED light, but just gets a little bit of ambient light. And when the lights are turned on and off, you could see that it adds a little bit more light space and I have a place for plants and other knickknacks up there as well. So finally, this is actually my favorite and it's building a double windowsill. So typically in a window, you would have the sill below, but there's just so much light that comes into your windows that why not actually build another windowsill in order to be able to increase the amount of space for plants. and. You know, people laugh that, uh, especially when doing the 365 days of plants, people are like, how many plants can actually fit on your southwest windowsills? Well, with four windows facing southwest and then having a double windowsill, you could actually fit a ton of more plants in those areas. So guys, I hope that gave you some new ideas about how to increase space in your house for all of those plants that you have or that you're going to get. Do you have ways that you're ingeniously creating more space for plants in your home? Share your tips with others in the comments below. And if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. And if you want to be in the loop when the next video drops, 
then hit the subscribe button and hit the notifications bell while you're at it. If you're keen to deepen your knowledge of plant care, then check out some of my other resources, including my book, How to Make a Plant Love You, the 125 Houseplant Care Spreadsheet and Houseplant Care Tracker, and the Houseplant Masterclass, which is the first audiovisual course on houseplant care, cultivation, and more at houseplantmasterclass.com.